Hey royalty, it's Ellie here, and today is inauguration day. Um, Joe Biden was inaugurated as the 46th president of the United States, and so it is what it is. Um, it's on the record, it's on the books. Uh, Kamala Harris is our first colored woman vice president. Now, shout out to the ladies. You know, that is history made. That is amazing. That's awesome. And to the minorities, uh, history was definitely made for uh, the minorities in America. And so that 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 is record breaking. That is history being made. And I can respect that. Um, but we're in this situation where people are idolizing the fact that, uh, you know, we have a woman in office and we have a colored person in office. Um, I think it's just a little strange that we still, in this day and age, um, worship in a way, culture and skin color. And so, um, you know, it's, it's also this phrase of putting culture over kingdom. And, you know, if you're a kingdom person, I refer to you all as royalty. If you watch this video, uh, whether you subscribe to my channel or not, if you watch this video, you are royalty. And I just think that um, a lot of people put culture over kingdom way too much. That is a phrase that um, Marcus Rogers uses, but I think it fits It fits the narrative. Um, and I've heard other people use it too. It's just that is something that he's been saying for quite a while now. And it just makes sense. Um, so with that being said, I just think that after this, I think we're good. I don't think we need to worship dark skin anymore. And by that, I mean, you know, of course, be proud of yourself. Be proud of your heritage. Be proud of your ancestors. All that stuff. I'm not saying denounce yourself or anything. But this whole first black this, first black that, first color this, first minority that, it's just kind of played out at this point. And it's like, you know, well, how could you say that? We've uh, accomplished this many things and it's just our right to celebrate ourselves. It's okay to celebrate that person for their accomplishment. I think that's fine. But um, praising someone for the fact that they may be a different gender or um, color, I don't think that's necessary. And I know that this can feel like a rather bold statement to say. It's like, well, how could you say that you're a black woman yourself, all this stuff? And that's the thing. I am a black woman. And I'm a person. I think any person can do whatever they want to do despite what they look like and what gender they are. I don't think that we should make it such a big deal anymore. Just celebrate that person. If anything, we can celebrate age and time accomplishment of doing something, saying that someone did something by this age. I think that would make more sense because usually people take a longer time to accomplish certain things than um, than other people. So it's to say, like, let's say a 30-year-old accomplishes what usually 60-year-olds do. I think that can be celebrated because the 60-year-old obviously has more time to have accumulated knowledge and wisdom than the 30-year-old, but the 30-year-old was able to accelerate the time of success. And that I feel like that can be admired because it takes a lot of willpower to do that and concentrate, especially in our culture now where being young, you're just expected to really not do anything with your life and um, wait until you are older before you really get anything accomplished. And so... I just feel like that would make more sense. Is my dog out there barking? He's just out there barking at people. But anyway, that's the difference I see or seeing like rags to riches stories where you have two people who accomplished the same thing despite coming from two different backgrounds. So it's like you have somebody who got their doctorate's degree and their parents paid for their college education where you had somebody and they made like average regular grades in a school and stuff then you have somebody who was in complete poverty and they made straight a's they were in honors programs they got scholarships and grants to be able to go to college and they were like oh, what's it called uh <laughs> sorry i didn't go to college so i don't remember all these names but it was like 
cum laude or something, where you're in the top percentile of your class, you know, something like that. Um, yeah, like seeing those types of stories, I think those are inspirational, but it's just this whole, like, cause I didn't say what race or, or like color these people are but a lot of people would assume that the first person i'm talking about is white and then the person who came from nothing was black let's just say it's reverse let's say it's a middle class black family who paid for college and it was a white dude who came from rags who uh made all the accomplishments in getting his doctorate degree we don't know so i feel like judging someone by the content of their character is more important than the color of their skin I just think we should move past all this. It's 2021. Like, okay, we get it. People are black. People are white. People are Hispanic. People are Asian. Okay. You know, we we have cultures. We have cultural differences. And I think that's cool. I think that's fine. But I just, you know, it's just, that's one of my things. Um, It is one of my opinions, some people may disagree with me. Like I said, some people may even feel like my statement is bold. I just, I've always felt like this. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me that we still have first black everything and we're celebrating to the celebrating it to the extent that we're celebrating it. I remember when Kylie Jenner became the first, uh, the youngest female billionaire and people were upset. And so people started bringing up this other woman she was a black woman who had a I think she had a skincare business I forgot what type of business she had but she was a young billionaire and it was like well where's her recognition and I was like Forbes said youngest female billionaire not female billionaire who is black she might be the first black billionaire youngest first youngest black billionaire female but she didn't beat that age. At first, it was uh, Mark Zuckerberg, and then it was Kylie Jenner. Not the female part, but you get what I mean. So it's like, instead of acknowledging the facts, and then it was funny because like there's a whole like mini scandal with Forbes and stuff happening. It's like, well, she wasn't actually a billionaire when they put out the article, but then by her sales generating the way they were, she eventually actually truly did become a billionaire. So it was like, ooh. But anyway. It was like tearing tearing down somebody because of whatever reason, because you disagree that quote unquote white people shouldn't be acknowledged in the way that they are. And it's like, well, it's not her fault. She's white. And that's the whole thing about the Kardashian Jenner family. These folks can't do anything and everyone be happy for them. Um, Kylie Jenner was the first billionaire in her family her net worth alone was more than her entire family at the time this is including Kanye and Kim being married okay at the time that Kylie became a billionaire her net worth alone was more than all of her family members combined just think about that and she was 21 if I'm not mistaken and she had just had her baby that's all I'm saying. It's like, take everything into account, not just, oh, she's white. Oh, she's from the Kardashian family. So she was about ba- yeah, making a billion dollars is hard. <laughs> not m- most people will never make a billion dollars, at least in our day and age, in our generation. Most people will not become billionaires. So when you look at it that way, instead of, oh, well, she came from money. I mean, of course, that was a benefit. And that's, you know fortunate for her that she was able to do it um at that time but it was just a matter of time before uh like that's the thing kim and kanye became billionaires like a couple years after that and it was like she just was able to accelerate the time and speed of her breaking that barrier being i mean you know she was blessed to have had that opportunity but to come from a wealthy family that that was not her fault that was nothing there was nothing she could do about that Um, so when it comes to different accomplishments that people make, it makes no sense for us to show hatred towards white people or lighter skinned races because of that. And at the same time, praising someone because they have darker skin at this point is just weird. 
uh, I think we should be able to celebrate everybody because of their accomplishments, no matter what race they are. And that's really just how I feel about that whole topic. I don't really want to talk about it anymore. On the more spiritual side of things, um, also your relationship with God has a lot to do with your success. Um, nothing against Gary V, but he talks a lot about hard work, grinding, you know, all that stuff, like putting your 100 in. You should put your 100% effort into everything that you do. Um, and those of us who follow Christ, the Bible says that we do our works unto the Lord, not unto man. So that's why a lot of us tend to be perfectionists, because we do our work as if we're turning in a grade to God. It's like, hey, God, is this good enough? Like, it is that type of thing. And of course, you know, sometimes um, in those situations, we let our ego and we let our how we feel or what other people say um, affect our work. And that's where you have to have a clear cut relationship with God and understand exactly what he's telling you versus what man is telling you. Because it could be a situation, of course, people are would be like, oh, yeah, that's good enough. Go ahead and put it out. And then God will be like, no, that's not good enough. But what about when God says, yes, I love it. It's perfect. And other people say, oh, no, that's not good enough. Think about that. Because somebody might take what other people say and be like, oh, well, if it's not good enough, if they said it's not good enough, then I don't know. Well, you should listen to God in the first place. Because you don't know if that person is being truthful or if they're just jealous or upset that they haven't done it. And so that's what it is when it comes to stuff like that. And um, also, when it comes to your relationship with God, he will send help. And he will send what people will refer to as angels. Um, I can't say aliens in this situation. I don't really hear uh, many stories about aliens helping people. So I don't have any references for that. But plenty of times people will be like, oh, this angel came and helped me. Whether it was an angel, like literally, as far as like it being a spiritual being that they could see with their eyes or... It was an angel and a person, and it was like, this person came to help me, and they are just amazing, and then poof, they were gone. I didn't see them anymore after that. It could be that type of thing. I was reading Exodus, I think it was 36 this morning, and um, it was talking about how, again, how the cherubims were helping them to uh, build a tabernacle. And I thought about it while I was reading, and I was like, people have tried for years to rebuild pyramids to the extent that they were built before in the past and it's like without with all the technology and tools that we have we haven't been able to replicate pyramids the way that they were built before what if it wasn't man who built the whole thing and it was cherubims or angels who helped assist the people in creating the pyramids what if that's the case and is not something that we should try to do by our own strength. And that's the problem with man. Man always wants to do things by their own strength. There's some things God will let us do by our own strength. But there's other situations where you really have to trust him and let him guide you. And let him send his divine help um, instead of trying to do things by your own strength. And I'm kind of speaking to myself right now because there's some things that I'm trying to accomplish and I wanted to accomplish last year that I did not accomplish. And sometimes I beat myself up for it, but it's like... Just trust God, trust God and follow his voice instead of um, trying to follow what I want to do in the way that I want to do it. And so, but yeah, like that's the thing. It's like, let's look at who God is really helping. Let's look at who has divine favor on their lives. Let's look at the different ways that miracles just happen for individuals instead of looking at their skin color, instead of looking at even where they came from because some things people just won't be able, like where you come from does not determine your destiny in life that's plain and simple some people do end up being um what's it called products of their environment but that's because they did not develop the willpower to change their destiny that's developing your own relationship with god because God will tell you, I want you to do this. And this this may have absolutely nothing to do with what you originally wanted to do with your life. It could be something totally different from what you thought. Stop it. 
And so once you learn how to listen to God's voice and do what he says to do, then he'll take you to heights you'd never ever think you'd be at or you thought you'd be there, but not in the time frame that you end up getting to that point. Or it may show up in a different way because you listened to him and it didn't happen how you expected it to happen. That sort of thing. And so there's a lot that goes into that, but I just wanted to talk about this topic a little bit. Hey, 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 hey. Um, so, yeah, congratulations to the president and the vice president. Uh, I hope they do well. I hope they do well in office and they do the things that uh, they accomplish to do as long as it lines up with the will of God. Um, you know, everyone who was hoping for everything to get turned around. Um, I don't think, you know, this is the end of anything. You know, I don't think it's the worst thing to happen um, in a literal sense. You know, some people may feel differently, but I know for myself and I know for the individual this election will not really change anything. I know that, you know, they want to raise taxes and do a lot of crazy stuff. But that's the thing. If you're already conscious, you knew what to do already. It's going to hurt a lot of people who had no idea what was going on. Honestly. But it's not really going to hurt those who have that divine knowledge and wisdom. So I'm going to get more clarity on what that means exactly. Probably come to you guys in another video and expound on what I mean. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. I uh, pretty much said what I needed to say. You know, always talk to God before making major decisions, okay? Always. All right, royalty. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.